welcome, welcome to the Heads Together podcast. Super jazzy. I'm super jazzy because this week I have as my guest on this podcast my very own coach training guru, Marion Tilly. Oh my goodness, Marion is, as well as being one of my favorite people, she is the founder of the Institute of Coaching Studies. Um, this is an international coaching federation accredited or ICF accredited coach training provider. And uh, I can tell you, I looked for a good while before I chose who to train with as a coach. And as a bit of background, I mean, I was already working as a coach, calling myself a coach. I know now that I wasn't actually coaching. It was so important to me to find a coach trainer who matched my own kind of ethics and who I really trusted to invest with which is the way I make every decision for my business. You know, do I trust this person? Do they think the way I do? Are they ethical, right? And Marion is all those things and more. The Institute is just for me the standout platinum standard for coaches who want really robust, really solid training to become, um, well, whether they want to become ICF accredited or not. It's just really platinum level coaching. And so I am so excited to have Marion join me this week because I really wanted to talk to her and get to the bottom of what it really takes to make a great coach. Because she sees, you know, a lot of people, obviously, who are raising their hands and she is very clear about who her coach training program is and isn't for. So I really wanted to talk to Marion today, like I say, about what it really takes to be successful as a coach. There are so many people entering the coaching arena right now, and there are so many coach training organizations that maybe don't offer this same level of doing the right thing. And so I wanted everyone listening, my audience, to really hear from someone who I trust to always do the right thing and to always give us the smart advice. And for someone who's made such a massive difference and impact on my own business, you know, my business looks very different now to the way it looked before I trained with Marion. So yeah, without further ado, let's dive into the episode. Welcome, welcome to the Heads Together podcast. I'm Jill Mokes, and I am obsessed with cutting through the noise when it comes to growing your business. Each week, via intimate coaching conversations and inspirational stories, I share what it really takes to get the results you want in a way that feels right to you. I am all about attracting higher ticket opportunities, building authentic relationships, and creating the abundant, full fat version of your dream business. I mean, how many of us have beavered away creating a light version of what we really want? The thing is, I honestly believe when you're outstanding at what you do, there is no limit to what you can achieve. So, are you ready to put our heads together and make it happen? Let's go. Marion! Thank you for joining me. Hi, Jill. Thank you so much for inviting me. Oh, my goodness. My pleasure. I've been wanting to have you on the podcast for ages. You know that. And um, there's a very good reason for that. So for everyone listening, I feel right now a little bit like, you know, like a um, when you bump into one of your teachers after you've left school, I feel a little bit like that. So for everyone listening, Marion was my coach and trained me to become a coach, to become an ICF certified coach. So we go back a little bit and she is my absolute 
coaching guru in my <laughs> eyes. <laughs> she, you're the person that in terms of coaching style, I'm, I'm always having my head and would love to be able to emulate. So I'm so happy you've come on the podcast. Thank you so much Jeff, for having me. And thanks for... <laughs> But saying this, it's just a bit of pressure. Never had the coaching guru. He's the best <laughs> coach in the entire planet and universe, everyone. No Thanks pressure. for setting the <laughs> expectations right, Jill. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so just for everyone listening who doesn't know you as well as I do, can you just share a little bit about who you are, what you yeah. do? Yeah, Thank of you. Course. So I'm a professional coach. I've been coaching for quite a few years now, but I also am the director of the Institute of Coaching Studies, which provides coach training programs to people who want to become coaches or coaches who want to have a formal training and aim at an ICF accreditation. So from the International Coaching Federation. So I have two hats, the kind of coaching on one on, on the one on one basis and training other coaches. Mm -hmm. And the Institute is obviously where I trained to become ICF certified. And it's funny, I was thinking about this a bit before we came on. And I was just thinking back to like my thought process for wanting to become certified. And if I'm completely honest, I was calling myself a coach, but I wasn't coaching, not in the way that I now know coaching to be. And I guess I still wear two hats. You know, I still do consulting or mentorship where I help people with do this thing next. But I'm also much more confident now to do the mindset coaching piece that's so important. And it was only really when I found you that I realized what was missing from my practice. Is that something you see happen quite often? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Every, anyone can call themselves a coach and you do have in your day to day in your work, you do use coaching skills, active listening, powerful questions. So in theory, anyone could coach, you know, people. However, there is an aspect of coaching, of professional coaching that is a bit deeper than just listening actively and asking powerful questions. And that is trying to understand what's underneath the person's issue. Uh, and this requires a training or, or some mentoring from an experienced coach who will show you what it takes to actually listen between the lines, not just what people say, but what they don't say in a session. That's such a good point. And I think that was a piece that was probably missing for me because of my leaning to the perhaps more consulting part of what I do. I was always kind of in problem solving mode and okay so you're saying this is the problem right here's the answer <laughs> and of course there's so much more to it than that exactly and coaching is in a way a great support to solve problems but sometimes problems are underneath the surface and when a coach is not fully trained to see those what's underneath the surface, this can be quite challenging. Uh, so a coach will actually stay at the surface level and would do what we call kind of transactional coaching where the plan comes with a goal and this is what's going to be delivered at the end of the session without really addressing that there may be issues that are connected to greater issues that the person is having. So it's really looking at this holistic approach to coaching that training is required. You can coach someone on an issue they have, mm. but you will just only help them with that issue. If you go a bit deeper, you will help them indirectly with a lot of other issues they're not even aware of, but they'll have learned how to deal, yeah, again, at a deeper level to, uh, to solve their problems. You taught me, which is the thing that really stuck with me, which is you coach the person, not the problem. Oh, yeah. This is a very common saying. Actually, it's even the name of a, of a book, the title of a book. It's just really about going back to coaching the person, not the problem they bring to the session. Exactly. Yeah. And I just wanted to kind of acknowledge as well that there are a ton of new coaches who have entered the arena now calling themselves coaches. And I don't really like the way that people are put down for that. You know, I think there's a kind of a bit of 
I don't know, cool kids club where people don't want to let new people into the industry. And I don't like that. I think coaching is a wonderful career, right? And we should be encouraging people to become coaches. Absolutely. I think that there's room for everyone. Yes, there you, is. As a coach, you cannot coach everyone because you'll have it. You'll choose a specialty that not everyone will need. Your approach will be different than another coach and will speak to some people, but not to others. So mm-hmm. there's room for everyone. Everyone can literally become a coach and offer something unique. And so it's really not about putting new people down, but encouraging them and actually creating a network of coaches around oneself that will help expand and support more people. Yeah. Absolutely. But I think the problem with this influx of coaches is that there's also a rising of coach trainings. And I guess this is why I was so keen to have you on today, because you and I share a very similar ethos around this. And that is that there is something about finding a company, a person, a training institute like the institute that you have founded that does things the right way, that kind of runs the business the way I run my business. I know when I was looking for a accreditation program, I really took a while before I found you because I wasn't finding someone with that same ethos and those same kind of ethical standards. But I would have to say that's why I recommend the institute to absolutely anyone because of and even more so now I know you so well because there is just this next level standard of approach isn't there is has that been in something that's intentional with you you know is is that what you wanted to create when you founded the institute absolutely my background before becoming a coach is in client services so for five years before becoming a coach full-time i was leading teams in client services so this approach to serving clients and making right by them is something that was already in me before so when i looked at founding the institute one of the first thing i thought about was obviously creating a course that is of quality, that is accredited to allow people to be accredited if they want, but accreditation is not mandatory to practice as a coach. Mm -hmm. But also making sure that people knew what they were signing up for. And I don't know if you remember when, but when you contacted me, I wanted to make sure that you knew what the course was about. Yes. I remember that really clearly because I remember thinking to myself, how refreshing that Marion has literally come back to me and almost, I I was almost emailing saying, take my money. (laughs) I want to sign up. Just let me sign up. Take my money. And you came back to me and said, "Mm, okay, but hold on. I just want to, you know, you're a business coach and I just want to make really sure that this is the right program for you because this is, you know, a lot of this is around general coaching practice. This isn't about business coaching as such and you were so thorough about just making sure I understood that and straight away for me that was like a massive box ticked. You were the first business coach to uh, register for the program and I wanted to make sure that you knew what you were signing up for and I was not going to take your money and not make sure before that (laughs) That we were 100% aligned on what the what you were going to get from the course. Like for me, this is just unthinkable to not be straightforward or transparent about what the course is about. Mm-hmm. And I would rather redirect people towards a course that uh, could be better suited for them if I know that the course that we offer is not the right fit for them based on what they gave me as information in their email or in the phone call we had. Mm. That may, I mean, it makes so much sense. It makes sense for the person who's coming to you, but it makes sense for you as an institute as well, because your reputation is fantastic. And I would imagine that's really precious to you. Yes, it is. And it's a great way of avoiding difficult conversation after. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that's so true. So with that in mind, tell us a little bit about who the course is for, the training that you offer inside the Institute? So we have two trainings, a level one course and a level two course, which is more for advanced uh, coaching for people who've already trained as a coach before, whether 
with us or with another coach training provider. The level one certification that we have is for anyone who's interested in becoming a coach. There's no prior experience required to sign up and be successful in this course because it really focuses on the skills of coaching, active listening, coaching ethics, so doing the right thing by your client and by the coaching profession, powerful questions. So all those very important skills and competencies that are essential in coaching are really expanded on in the certification. It's for anyone who's interested in becoming a coach, regardless of the niche or the specialty that I want to choose, because, you know, obviously there's so many different types of coaching, but deep down at the core of coaching, we all use the same skills. And this is what the certification is going to be about. So you train on the skills and you learn those skills later on, then you get to choose the specialty you want to focus on. You actually have a really good resource for people, don't you, for deciding at later point what their niche might be in terms of coaching, which is something that a lot of people struggle with that. Right? Yes, we have created a, a PDF that talks about 25 coaching niches and how you can find yours. Uh, the idea was to give this additional resource to people who are thinking about becoming a coach, but not knowing what title to choose, because this is where you can be so creative and choose whatever title you want. So we're talking about those 25 niches and inviting you to think about what you like as a person and as a coach, but also potentially creating your own niche. So that's something that you can download on our website. Oh, that's perfect. We'll pop a link to that in the show notes. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. So the Institute itself, like you just said, this is for people who maybe they want to train to be an ICF accredited coach like I did that was really important for me when I signed up it was kind of I never went to university so I never had a degree or anything like that so for me getting that kind of those IC uh, ACC certification was really important to me it was just like oh I've done I've finally seen something through and got the qualification yes. it's it's incredibly rewarding to get the accreditation yeah, because it isn't easy either, and nor should it be, because I do think it sets us apart as coaches who are committed to a high level, high standard of coaching. It definitely is a, a differentiator in the business because this accreditation shows that you can do coaching at a certain standard, and this standard was assessed independently by a professional organization. So it's not just you saying, I'm a great coach, or it's not just saying a friend is telling you that you're a great coach. No, it's this independent professional organization that tells you, yes, Jill can do this coaching at this level. Uh, mm -hmm. We've assessed it with, she passed a, uh, an exam. She took a performance evaluation, so had to submit a recording. So all those things means a lot in how you can market yourself after yeah, absolutely right. Yeah, it really does. And I think one of the things you really helped me with was that I kind of do have tendencies to be quite black and white about things. So, of course, I would read all of the instructions for the ICF that you needed to comply with for that accreditation. And I would really beat myself up if I wasn't doing it to the absolute letter. And I think what you really helped me with before and after I was accredited was being able to use those, that ICF framework, but actually put it into my own coaching style and make it feel more authentic and more usable for me. And that was a bit of a game changer. And this is where I think the Institute really stands out above other training providers. And that is because and I think it is your commitment to that ethical way of doing it to make sure that people are getting everything they need to take forward afterwards. I felt like there was just nothing left out. So, yeah, I want to thank you because that has really shaped so much of what I do now. A lot has changed for me when I got that accreditation. Some of it was my own mindset, I think, from, from having that. But certainly I know my clients have really felt the benefit. That's sure. really great to hear, Jill. The, the idea is that we don't aim for perfection. Perfection in coaching does not exist. What we aim to do is share some, like a minimum requirement that is quite high. So we don't aim at thinking, oh, what did I 
didn't I do or I could have done this? No, it's looking at what are the minimums that I, sh- I need to show in each session that feel like I'm delivering great coaching. And this reframing helps a lot of people, coaches, feel less self-conscious, less judgmental about their performance as a coach and just look at the, the things that they can do as a developmental area as opposed to something that they should have done. Exactly. So I suppose what I'd love us to get into today is really a subject that is very dear to your heart, and that is looking at what it really takes to be a great coach. Just against that backdrop of so many people entering the arena, so many people for people who haven't really trained to be a great coach, I would love your thoughts on some of the things it takes that people can think about and think, yeah, I I think I have that in me to be a great coach. The first thing that comes to mind is a passion for learning. This is, I want to say, a non-negotiable when it comes to becoming a great coach. You need to love learning because obviously there's going to be the initial coach training you, you will do, but this is just the beginning. That's something we always tell people. You're just starting you're learning about coaching. And then after this training, you will have other trainings to do or other books to read, or you'll just always, always learn and find other things to improve upon, whether it's your skills, knowledge on psychology, or even about the topic that you're coaching on, whether it's business, parenting, mindfulness, any specialty that you can think of. You have to expand your knowledge on this. Mm. That makes so much sense. I know you gave us quite a few book recommendations and additional reading and things like that. It was never kind of just about the material in the program. So I think that has helped as well. And you're right. I think that passion to take that learning forward afterwards is a sign that you're going to be successful, right, as a coach, because it isn't about ticking a box, Exactly. And it brings this idea of being adaptable because if you just, your knowledge is fixed and you just do the one, you follow the one framework you learned five years ago and you haven't updated it, you haven't taken into consideration new information, you're not going to adjust to your clients, uh, what they need, the topics they bring or the different sessions you're going to have with them. So this idea of adaptability and following your client's flow is going to be very important and can only be done if you've accumulated knowledge and experience through, through the years. That following your clients flow it I mean that was probably one of the biggest things I learned <laughs> when I when I was training with you. it's it's probably you that know, was a that, game changer yeah. <laughs> it's probably one of the things that we discussed the most in the training uh because we have a lot of people coming to us and wanting a framework wanting a template which is obviously absolutely normal when when you start you want to feel safe you want to have a clear step by step and we give that to make people feel comfortable in starting it but then we tell them throw that away and do the coaching that you want to do so just show up for your client but this is a bit scary at the beginning to do that yeah that's and you need that support to be able to do that because it is a bit scary but I tell you what it's really informed my business coaching so whilst the course wasn't about business coaching and it was about the actual practice of coaching which was just so valuable for me but in terms of the business now that lesson about following the client throughout the coaching process really has informed the way I coach my clients around their business because it isn't about a template or a blueprint or a roadmap. It isn't because every client's business is different because every client is different. So it's really helped me make sure that every client I coach, I'm doing it in a bespoke way that's right for them. I'm, and and more than that, I'm not telling them what the right strategies for them are. I'm having a conversation with them so that their input forms what the right strategy for them is and it's just it makes such a difference it does and and it's great that you're you know seeing the impact it had beyond just your coaching skills but also the way you approach your clients because you know coach training will also change the way you see relationships because those skills again they apply to your to your life as well 
Um, so it's training to learn new skills or develop skills that you already have to be able to use them as a coaching practitioner. But it's in that process, learning about yourself a lot, learning about your motivation, your own core values, and then being able to apply this to the rest of your life, not just in the one area that coaching will, will affect. That's so important as well. Just coming back to that topic of, you know, what does it take to be a successful coach? To be able to have that self-reflection and understand your own values, all of those things, there is a lot, there's a crossover. If you want to be a coach who actually makes money as a coach, you need to understand those things about yourself and your values, because all of that is what feeds into the way you market your practice, you market your business as a coach. Because most coaches who really want more than a, you know, thing on the side, if you want to, uh, like I do, which is earn really great money as a coach and I don't do anything else, you know, that is my business. I think it, that self reflection work is so important. That's something we focus on a lot because that's the primary source of information you're going to get. You're not going to be mentored or observed for every session you have. So the only source of feedback that you can get that is constant is yourself. So learning how to self-reflect, learning how to be aware, mindful, so that you self-reflect in a way that's constructive and productive. You genuinely, as objectively as you can, look at yourself and what you did in those sessions and what happened in yourself is, is very important for your own development. Uh, so it's being curious about how you felt, what happened in a session for you, um, and how you want to move forward again, having this coaching mindset applied to yourself. It's not just about insights and discovery. It's about, okay, now that I have that knowledge, what do I want to do about it? How will I work better with my client next time? Or what other questions will I ask to make sure that you always learn that way? Absolutely. Self-reflection is very big. It's one of the main activities that we ask people to do when they do the self-study uh, part of the training because again it's a practice that they need to develop as a habit in order to get better at it it's like anything yeah absolutely it's like a muscle that you need to keep working out isn't it exactly we touched on this a bit earlier, actually, Marion, about that kind of the ethical side of things. And, and like I was saying, that was probably the absolute deciding factor for me was just this feeling that I'd found someone with a very similar ethic to me in terms of good business, doing business right. And that's how you came across to me in the way you run your business. Is that something that you look for in potential students for the Institute? Yeah, absolutely. This idea of people having a very strong professional ethics is something that is essential to becoming a coach and that hopefully people can see in the training that we deliver. This High standards of professional conduct is essential in coaching. Um, there is, you know, as you know, the International Coaching Federation has a code of ethics. Mm. The European Mentoring and Coaching Council also has a code of ethics. So ethics is one of, is at the core of the coaching profession. What makes it safe for people to hire coaches and know that everything they talk about is going to be confidential. If you already have this strong pride, in doing the right thing by people and by your clients, you are going to be a great coach because you will always do the right thing by them. Oh, God, I really love that because it's not complicated or difficult to achieve this. It's about just always doing the right thing. Absolutely. And it's as simple as being honest, being transparent about your qualification, your experience, the services you offer. It's about keeping information confidential. So the, all those things are quite simple, but they need to be at the forefront of our focus when we coach people. And this is what it means to be an ethical coach. And ethical coaches always win. Always, always. And I think it's going to only get more important as time goes on. You know, I, I'm probably harping on about it a bit, but this influx of new coaches into the arena, not all of whom are going for professional coach training to get qualified or anything. And so the coaches who do set themselves apart, don't they? Because they're demonstrating that commitment. 
to coaching standards. Absolutely. And even if they don't go for an accreditation, which is not, again, not mandatory, you know that if they were trained by an accredited program, you know that the ethics was covered, regardless of the code of ethics that was covered. You know that they were trained on this. So it's really looking at what is the education that people followed to become a coach? What what did they complete? And looking at this as as a piece of information about whether they actually are serious about the professional conduct for coaches. Mm. So, Marion, for anyone who's listening, who is thinking, I'm either, they're already coaching, but they've never kind of gone down that official training route. Maybe they're coaching as part of what they do, like it was for me. It wasn't everything I did. Still just as valid, right? I'm just thinking for those people listening who are thinking, God, that, that sounds exactly what I need. I want to have trust. I want to feel comfortable that I'm investing in my training with a really ethical company that does it right. What's their kind of first step? Should they be reaching out to you? Should they be emailing you? What, what do you recommend they do next? So they can go on the website, coachingstudies.org, and maybe have a read about the organization and the trainings, the content, the curriculum. We put all the information on the website. We don't hide anything. So just to have more information there. But also I'm available on by email. If people want to contact me, my email is marion at coachingstudies.org. I'm just very happy to answer any questions that people have and even schedule a call if that's something that they need to ask their questions and just hear a bit from me directly. Oh, that's fantastic. So I'll put all of those links definitely into the show notes for sure. And if they wanted to go ahead, when could they potentially start their training? Do you run it in cohorts now or, you know, what's the... So we have cohorts starting from October every month. Uh, we are going to really increase the amount of groups that we organize. So from this October, every month we'll have a new group starting. We had three new trainers joining us So I think that it's just a great way of finding the right training for you that works. We'll have several days, time of the day to make sure that there's always one group that suits the availability of everyone. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's great timing as well for October, isn't it? It kind of gets that summer out the way. And I think it gives people as well a chance to, I know when I decided to do it, I think I signed up, hmm, let me think, I reckon I signed up a good couple of months before I started the training. And that was really important for me because we had some kind of stuff to read up on beforehand and I read some books and things and I felt like I was so well prepared by the time we, I was chomping at the bit, but, <laughs> but it was, re- yeah, it was really good to have that bit of space as well. So I just got on to the course I think I was the last sign up I think for that course yeah the course starts before the first class there is a bit of pre-work to do there'll be videos to watch uh so we have always book recommendations because we just love sharing that and making sure that people can get started on learning before the class starts so absolutely I think it's great to have a bit of buffer also because it's it can be a long training since it's a there's so many topics to cover and we want to make sure that there's enough time for practice as well. So getting started and getting ready is important uh, so that you can start the first class of the training almost fully prepared to coach people and, and learn about all those skills. It's so exciting. I mean, just like you and I know as coaches, and I love to be able to say you and I know, no. <laughs> like, like, you know, now that I am almost as much of a guru as you, Mary. You are, Jill. You are. <laughs> we are peers. Ah, come on. We are. <laughs> um, but we know, don't we, how fulfilling this is as a career. Sometimes I have to pinch myself that I get paid to have these incredible conversations with amazing, in my case, women. I don't think there is really any other career like it. Well, there is, there isn't for me. It's 
just mind blowing to me. Yeah, it's just such a beautiful job. Not only you help people, but you also have the freedom of choosing when you do that. You make your own schedule. You choose the work that you do and also the people you work with because again, not you can't coach everyone. So it's just really looking at creating this perfect bubble where you can coach the people that you can really help and be paid in return to sustain the life that you want. So, I mean, what else do we need? What gets better than that? <laughs> exactly. Well, I just, I definitely want to thank you for everything that you've done for me and my career as a coach, which has just been phenomenal. Thank you. Well, thank you for trusting uh, me and the Institute for your training. Um, I really, really enjoyed training with you and, and the group that you had was really lovely. So just such a great training experience from a trainer perspective. Yeah. It was a really great group. Some of us are still still in touch and yeah, it's really great. Well, thank you for coming on today. I'm going to put those links in the show notes. So if you're listening and you want to reach out to Mariam, do do that. I will also put her LinkedIn info in the show notes. So connect with her on LinkedIn too, because you're very accessible, I know. So, and I appreciate that. And thank you for coming on. Thank you. My pleasure. See you soon. See ya. hope you enjoyed this episode and that getting our heads together this week has filled your mind with what's possible if you love the show would you do me a massive favor please would you leave a five-star rating on apple podcasts it would really help me put more heads together reach more ears and expand more minds until next week bye for now bye